Characters create story. Memorable characters are what keep a story in our minds years after we've seen the film. But how do you actually build characters? And what should be the main focus when writing a character for a story? This is the first video in a two-part series I'm doing on creating characters. Today I want to explain the fundamental building blocks of creating characters, and in the next video we'll be looking in depth at the different types of character arcs and exceptions to the rules. Let's start by looking at how to build dramatic characters. First, let's talk about a character's want. A want is the character's visible goal, and it's what makes up the events of the plot. The want is external, and the audience is usually aware of what a character wants. Maybe the character wants to become a great musician. Maybe she wants to kill the alien on her ship. Maybe he wants to figure out whether or not someone is guilty. Or maybe he wants to stop feeling the pain of a past relationship. The want is opposed by the external forces of antagonism. In Whiplash, Fletcher puts Andrew through all sorts of intense pressure. Andrew wants to become a truly great musician, so he continues to fight as hard as he can through everything Fletcher throws at him. In Alien, the Xenomorph moves through the ship ripping crew members to pieces. Ripley must find and kill it if she is going to survive. In 12 Angry Men, almost all of the members of the jury are ready to deliver a guilty verdict so they can just be finished with jury duty. Juror 8 must convince them to take the trial seriously and take a good look at the evidence. These antagonistic forces are all directly opposed to the clear goal of the character. This is a major dramatic element for your story. It is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to create drama without a character who wants something. You can create a story that brings an emotional response without character want, but you will not create a dramatic story. Plot isn't a string of random events, nor does it have to be shoving your characters into a formula so restrictive that you can't have any creative freedom. Plot simply follows the external want of the character as he or she pursues a goal. But why does your character want this thing? What do they think it will do for them? And why are they after it in the first place? When trying to understand why a character wants something, we need to look at need. Need is what the character must discover about themselves or the world to become complete, balanced, or whole. K.M. Wyland, award-winning author and writer of Creating Character Arcs, writes, Your character will spend most of the story pursuing his outer goal, the thing he wants. But what the story is really about, on a deeper level, is his growth into a place where he, first subconsciously, then consciously, recognizes and pursues his inner goal, the thing he needs. And that need comes from the lie your character believes. This lie is what stops the character from achieving what they truly need to become complete. In Whiplash, Andrew's lie is that he believes becoming a great musician will give him true purpose and meaning in life. In Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Joel's lie is that he believes totally erasing the memory of a relationship is better than dealing with the pain after it ends. Wyland writes, In order for your character to evolve in a positive way, he has to start out with something lacking in his life, some reason that makes the change necessary. He is incomplete in some way, but not because he is lacking something external. So while Andrew focuses on being the greatest musician he possibly can be, and Joel tries to save his memory of Clementine, these external goals will not make the characters whole as they believe. Their need can only be fulfilled by learning the truth. In stories where the main character goes through positive change, their need will be hidden from them as they try to solve the problem by getting what they want. Wyland writes, Your protagonist's inner conflict is all about this silent war between his want and his need, but it's also the gasoline in the engine of the outer conflict. If you have these two elements working in concert, you can bet you'll also have plot and character well on their way to perfect harmony as well. Want and need are intertwined. The character's want is usually a symptom of whatever is missing inside of the character. There are many stories in which a character's want changes. A character can have a different immediate want in each scene, while working towards his or her ultimate want. In Whiplash, Andrew's ultimate want remains the same, to become a great musician. However, in each scene, he has a different want that works as a smaller goal on the way to the larger one. Andrew wants to get in to Fletcher's band. After he gets in, Andrew wants to become the main drummer. When his spot on the band is challenged, Andrew wants more than anything not to lose it to a lesser drummer. Your character can also make major changes in their ultimate want. 
In Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Joel initially wants to remove his memory of Clementine. But once the process has begun, his want for the rest of the story changes. Now he wants to save his memories of Clementine. Can you hear me? I don't want this anymore. I want to call it off. A character can be confronted by multiple different forces of antagonism, which change his or her specific want. However, if your character goes through change, the overarching need is usually the same from beginning to end. Throughout the entire story, Joel's need is to realize that relationships are a natural, beautiful part of life, even though people aren't perfect. In Whiplash, Andrew's need is more complex, and not entirely obvious. This is something I'll cover in depth when talking about character arcs in part 2. So now that we have an understanding of these two fundamental building blocks of dramatic character, let's talk about how to get an audience engaged and interested in your particular character. The word likable has been overused in screenwriting circles. Instead of using likable, I'm going to use the word engaging. A character is engaging when we are interested in his or her struggle and want to know what will happen next. One way to engage an audience with a character is to give that character personality traits that endear us to him or her. Paddington is friendly, helpful, considerate, and positive. Captain America is brave, never gives up, and puts the lives of others before his own. If you are building a traditional protagonist, many of these positive character traits can help the audience engage with a character. But this doesn't work for all types of characters. Giving a character endearing or positive characteristics doesn't necessarily mean we will care for them. If that were the case, why do we initially engage with Sherlock Holmes? Why do we engage with gangsters and mob bosses? Audience engagement doesn't come from seeing a character do something nice or admirable. It comes from seeing a part of ourselves in that character or seeing something we want to be. This is empathy. In his book, Anatomy of Story, John Truby writes, To empathize with someone means to care about and understand him. One of the ways to get an audience to empathize is to attach the audience to elements of a character that they see themselves in or wish they could be. Sherlock is extremely competent and, at first glance, seems to be able to hold people at a distance without getting emotionally attached to them. These elements engage us with a character early on. His high competence is admirable and something we wish we could do. Not only that, but his ability to hold people at a distance may not be a healthy way to live, but it's something that many people wish they could do to avoid being hurt. This unhealthy element of Sherlock can engage the audience with the character because it's something we sometimes wish we could be. Gangsters are appealing because of their power and control over their world. When you see Don Corleone in The Godfather surrounded by his men, or Henry in Goodfellas walking through a club getting special treatment from everyone, it's easy to crave that kind of power and attention. This can engage us with the character. But there are some characters that do absolutely nothing to win our love, like the Joker, but end up doing it anyways. How does this happen? At first glance, the Joker is intelligent, strategic, funny, and is completely indifferent to the world around him. His indifference can resonate with the darker elements of our psyche, the part of us that wishes we could just stop caring about anyone except ourselves. But what's most important is that the Joker engages the audience on a philosophical level. The Joker doesn't want chaos just because he enjoys it. He is trying to prove to Batman that his way of viewing the world is correct. You see, their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. We've dropped at the first sign of trouble. Many of us have felt this way. We see the systems of morality and law around us and wonder if everyone is just faking it because they've never been truly tested. We aren't empathizing with the Joker because he's a nice guy. We empathize because we think he might be right. We understand his motives, and sometimes what he's saying can resonate with the darker elements of ourselves. In Nightcrawler, Lou isn't trying to prove a particular worldview to the audience, but we still empathize with him. Lou is an outcast. He's a loser who's trying desperately to become successful. So what do you say? I could start tomorrow or even why not tonight? No. We know how it feels to be trying our best at something yet still get constantly rejected. So when Lou begins to become successful, we may not approve of his actions, but we feel vindicated watching him win. Negative emotions are just as powerful a way to attach an audience to a character as positive emotions. Use them to your advantage. Understanding the dark side of your audience will make your character stronger. 
Empathy is all about understanding why characters do what they do, and getting an audience to stay engaged even if they don't agree with every decision the character makes. Dramatic characters are built upon want and need. Getting an audience to engage with the story is best achieved through creating characters that the audience can understand and empathize with. External plot and internal character journey will only be great if you have done the work to create strong dramatic characters with wants and needs. Whether you want to write a detailed outline or immediately sit down and start writing, understanding who your characters are is necessary to start your story in the right direction. But how do you write great characters that don't change, like Paddington and Lou? And what is Andrew's need in Whiplash? Does he really discover a truth at the end of the film? In part two, I'll dive deeper into these questions as I'll be taking a look at the different types of character arcs and how to use them to build compelling characters. Hello and thanks for watching. If you're a screenwriter, I'd like you to join the Writers Room. It's a Facebook group for screenwriters to connect, give and receive feedback, and encourage one another in the writing process. I hope to see you there. What did you think of this video? Let me know in the comments below, and stay tuned for part two coming soon.